Hi folks, Peter here. I want to do a short intro today to show you a new library which I've been working on called Telomere. Telomere is a structured telemetry library for Clojure and Clojure Script, which basically means that it offers the functionality which is a superset of traditional and structured logging. It is a replacement for Timber, but if you are already using Timber and if you're satisfied with Timber, there is zero pressure to update. I'm going to continue to support and maintain Timber as I always have. Uh, I have projects using Timber that I'm not planning on updating, uh, but if you want to take advantage of some of the improvements, some of the new stuff in Telomere, migrating is fairly straightforward. There is a guide on the Telomere wiki, which will take you step by step through what you need to do. And there is a shim namespace uh, to help with the transition. If you are starting a new project today, I would definitely recommend Telomere over Timber. With that, let me maybe get into showing you a little bit about the library. All right, so here's a basic REPL setup. I am going to evaluate my namespace import and I'm going to log a message over here. That's returning true. And actually what's happening is we're seeing output uh, written to standard out. Now that's happening because by default, Telomere has already registered a handler for outputting to console. If we're on Clojure Script, it would be going to browser console. Since I'm on JVM Clojure over here, it's just going to standard out, which is getting captured by my uh, CIDR REPL. Uh, let me show you some uh, variations here. My one level message. So this is outputting the same thing, except it's at the one level. Equivalent uh, to how Timber works. And if we want to join arguments, uh, we can use a vector. Hello world, something like this. And that's just uh, joining the args that are in the vector, right? So far, so good. So what is actually happening underneath over here, which leads from this call to this output. So calls like this in, uh, in Telomere are actually calls to what Telomere calls signal creators. Right, so uh, log is an example of a signal creator. Here's the doc string for that. It goes into some detail on how it works. Uh, but basically what it's doing is it's creating a signal under the covers, which is just a closure map with a bunch of keys and bells. And it is uh, dispatching that signal map to all of the currently registered handlers. And like I mentioned, by default, one of the registered handlers is this handler, which outputs to standard out. Now, if you want to actually inspect the signal which is being generated, because you want to see what it looks like, you can do that easily enough with uh, this util over here. Uh, just do all of these. Boom. Um, and what you'll see is uh, this is actually the underlying map signal which is being created. Um, and in particular, if you look for a few key things, you'll see the message is in here and uh, the level is in here and the namespace is in here, the line number is in here, um, a bunch of information uh, about the call site and about the data that you're providing to the signal call is inside the signal. And it is inside the signal when it gets to the handler. So all the handler is doing is it's processing the signal to output it to the console. So far, so good. Um, let me show you a little bit more about what uh, some of these standard signal creators can do. So one um, obvious, uh, well, one common thing over here is uh, to look at the different arities of what this can do. And one of the common arities is to include a map over here. And there's all sorts of options that you can put in here, but one of them is um, this ID, um, hello world, something like this. And over here, you see that the ID is being included in the output over there. Um, and actually this could be, uh, let me show you a more realistic example. Uh, let's say we have, I don't know, login, and we'll include some arbitrary data, username, stu, uh, I don't know, login ID 101, something like this. And um, we can say stu has logged in, something like this, right? Um, so over here you will see all of the data is included uh, in the output. In fact, what's happening, if you look at the underlying signal, signal is that all of this information, uh, including the ID and the data, is, uh, is part of the signal verbatim, right? So retaining structure, retaining types, 
um, all of Clojure's rich values and so on are being preserved as this flows through the telomere system and eventually hits your registered handlers. Um, so this is obviously one of the principles of structured logging is that you want to maintain your data types and your data structures uh, as long as possible so that your handlers ideally can do something uh, with that information in an informed way, right? They're not, uh, they're not dealing with text. They're dealing with raw arguments with their original types and structures. So um, I have told you about log. Um, there are a bunch of other signal creators, uh, which you can find out about by doing this. Uh, help signal creators. Um, I'm opening the doc string over here. So this explains um, various creators which are included in, uh, in Telomere. Uh, ultimately, they all do the same thing. Ultimately, they all create a signal map, which has a bunch of keys and bells. And in fact, all of them can contain the same keys and bells. So all of these uh, creators are in principle interchangeable. They just have slightly different calling conventions or calling APIs, which mean that they're, uh, some of them are more convenient in certain cases than others. Uh, for example, if you're not using uh, a log message, but you're just using an ID, uh, you may as well use event. And then you can just say my ID. And then that gets uh, output over there with our standard handler. And if you want to include the message, uh, message uh, for event, uh, that includes, uh, that goes there as well. Um, ultimately, all of these things, um, uh, let me show you here, all of these log and event and error and trace and spy, all of them uh, are actually just using a uh, signal underneath. So signal is the, uh, the top level generic signal creator. And uh, the options for all of these are available if you look at the var signal options. This goes into great detail about exactly everything that you can specify when you are uh, calling a signal creator. Um, there is also information on the content of the signals, right? So once you've generated a signal, you've got a map, what's in that map, here's information about all of that. Um, and you will note as well that there are a bunch of other uh, help vars. So if you look over here, there will be included information about the content, about filters, formatting, um, the general flow, uh, for example, pick that one up. Um, so this will show exactly how signals flow through the system. Anyway, the, there is a lot of internal documentation for this kind of stuff. Um, let me show you one of the other uh, types of signal creators, um, which is in here, which is trace. Um, so trace, again, just creates a signal like all the others, um, but it is uh, in particular useful for tracing program flow. Uh, so through your program, especially when you've got nested forms, let me, let me create an example actually. Um, so we can do something like this, inner function, um, let's say inner, and we can do uh, x, r function, x, t, trace, r, uh, inner function, x, something like that. Um, so in principle, if we call, out of function five, we're expecting actually two things um, to go to output over here. And let me make this clear. So two signals are actually going to output over here. Um, and in fact, if we want to uh, see what these signals are, uh, we can use uh, previously we used with signal. Uh, this time I'm going to use with signals because there's multiple signals coming out. Um, again, this is described in the documentation. Um, when you uh, call with signals, it's going to return the uh, return value of the form and all of the signals. So we actually need to destructure this for this to be useful. So we'll say uh, return val and then uh, signal one, signal two, something like that. And let's see. Okay. So the first, excuse me, the first signal which we have, which is the internal signal, is this one. Um, and in particular, what you will note is it has something uh, called the parent key. Uh, which explains who its parent is, um, its ID and its UID. Uh, each, each individual signal uh, can have an ID, which is kind of an identifier for the call site, and a UUID or a UID, which is a unique uh, uh, to that specific signal instance. So every single uh, instance that's generated has a unique UID. Anyway, this information here just uh, allows you to reconstruct the flow of you know X called Y called Z, something like this. And um, one of the things that you can do with this as well is, let's say this takes some time. Let's say this is a little bit slow. Uh, simulate this. 
1800, and yes, over here. So inner function is a little bit slow. Um, when we run this, and we look at the signal that's being generated, uh, one of the things you'll notice is that there is a run in sex over here, which is how long the form took. So this basically gives you some very, very basic uh, performance monitoring capabilities. Uh, you can trace the flow through your program and you can check how long particular things are taking to run. So how long it's taking uh, specific forms to evaluate. So let me, let me explain a little bit how uh, Telomere's filtering works. So first up, the most basic obvious thing you can do is uh, set a level. So let's say we have a warn level over here and we do a log at info level. My info message, message, bottom of our purple over here. Um, what you'll notice is this is returning nil and nothing is being output uh, to the uh, console uh, because our minimum level is not exceeded by our signal level. If I change this to warn, now this will in fact be logged and this will uh, return true, right? So basic, uh, basic levels as they work in uh, Timber or elsewhere. Um, we can also do things like set an NS filter, a namespace filter. So what is my current namespace uh, demo? Let me change this. Okay, namespace, all right. So uh, our current namespace, oops, our current namespace is this. Let's say we want to set a, a namespace filter and I want to, uh, let's say I want to allow anything that's in um, diamonds.telomere.star, so that's allowed. Let me run this. Let me first get rid of this min level and I will run info, info message, okay. So this is printing fine because we are currently allowing this namespace, but let's say it needed to be, uh, I don't know, my app, something like that. That's actually the namespace filter. Now, when I run this one, it's gonna know up, it's gonna return nil uh, because we have this namespace filter in effect, which is that we only allow things in the down. So uh, dot my app dot star um, for the namespace. If you look at the doc string for this, you'll see this is actually very flexible. Um, you can use regexes, you can use sets, uh, you can have full allow and deny specs. Um, this is quite flexible. Um, you can do the same thing for IDs. So we can say set ID filter. And uh, that's an example here. My ID one or my ID two. So what we're saying here is that we only want to allow signals which have uh, an ID of my ID one or my ID two, right? So let's try something like event my ID one. This should indeed go to the console and returns true. If we try my ID three, that will know up and nothing will go to the console because it's currently being filtered. Um, if we want to look at what the current filters are, uh, we can run, excuse me, this command over here. Uh, which shows, and in particular, you'll notice um, this makes a distinction here between compile time and runtime filtering, since uh, Telomere supports both. Um, I'm not getting into that in detail now, but it's in the um, it's in the online documentation. Um, so yes, let's turn this both off. Let's turn these off. Um, if you want more information about all of this stuff, again, online documentation or look at the help. Uh, signal filters. There's a bunch of information here about exactly how filters are applied. This is a very rich expressive system that allows you to apply all kinds of filtering. Um, in particular, one thing I'll note uh, is that when you're setting the min level um, and you look at the docs over here, uh, firstly, levels can be any arbitrary integer. They need not be these specific uh, keywords. That's sometimes useful in cases where you want more, uh, uh, more levels, let's say, uh, uh, of distinction. And uh, you can also set min levels by uh, namespace. So for example, certain namespaces will have certain levels and so on. And again, all this is explained in the documentation, just giving you a quick idea that it exists. Um, good, so there is a key idea here, which I, I wanna show, which is that one of the main uh, points of Telomere is that it is easy to filter, it is easy to sample, it is easy to rate limit, and when filtered, or sampled or rate limited, you are not paying for the cost of the signal construction. 
right? So if I have something, let's say, event uh, my f1, and let's say that we have some data in here, very expensive data, right? In other words, this is actually, I don't know, we're, we're, we're generating something. So let's say uh, do uh, thread sleep 2000, uh, very expensive data, right? Um, if I evaluate this here, um, over there, it took two seconds for this to uh, go to the console. And in fact, why is this not? Oh, okay. So this is getting evaluated immediately at the REPL uh, because under the covers, Telomere is actually uh, executing this asynchronously. Um, this is something that there's more information on the um, online docs. Uh, but basically, when you're setting up handlers, you can specify the kinds of semantics you want uh, for the handlers. They can be synchronous, they can be async. If they're async, you can set up the buffering semantics. Um, you can say that you want, let's say, a buffer of 2,000 items on three threads that is dropping when it's full and that triggers a certain event when there's back pressure. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can set up, uh, but the basic defaults are quite simple and I think quite reasonable for most folks. Um, in any case, what you're noticing here is that this output takes two seconds before it shows up uh, because once the handler is evaluating this data, uh, this data form, um, it takes two seconds to run. Now, if we, uh, for example, do something like this, set ID filter, and we say deny um, I have one, okay? And we run this again. This will now know up and this uh, data this expensive data calculation is never being um, paid for, right? We're not paying for this at all. The same thing is true. Uh, excuse me, let me turn this off. The same thing will be true if, for example, we are using rate limiting or we're using samples. So let's say, uh, so one of the options, um, which will be described in here and in signal options um, in detail over here, is a sample rate. So when you, um, have a signal creator call, you can specify a sample rate. Let's say my sample rate is going to be 0 0.5. Um, what that means, I'll remove this for the moment just to simplify. Uh, what that means is 50% of the time this form runs, it's actually going to generate a signal and send that signal to handlers. 50% uh, of the time it will not. Likewise, we can set up something like a rate limiter, which uh, again will be in the docs under signal options over here, rate limit, um, that describes how you can use this. But effectively what we're going to say here is, let's say, n number of calls in a certain amount of time. So let's say in 2000 milliseconds, let's wrap this in the function quickly, uh, my event, um, something like this. So, uh, and I'm going to call this a bunch of times, um, do times 10, my event, and uh, bang. What we're going to notice is that um, it's only being printed one time, right? Despite the fact that we're calling this 10 times, it's only being printed once because we've got a rate limit at this particular call, right? And uh, I'm, I'm not going into detail now on handlers because all of that's documented online in quite some detail, but um, it's worth noting that all of this kind of filtering that I'm talking about here is uh, can be specified both at the call site, right? So on the per signal basis and also on the handler. So you can have different handlers, let's say, with different sample rates or different rate limits. Um, and all of that works in a way that um, I think is quite pleasant. For example, if you have a signal which has a sample rate of 50% and you have a handler which has a, hand, uh, a sample rate of 50%, um, that means that 50% of possible signals are being generated and 50% of possible signals reaching the handler are actually being processed, which means actually it's 50% of 50%, uh, which you're finally seeing at the other end. Um, and when you eventually get the signal, uh, it shows that multiplicative number, right? It's been able, it's calculated what the uh, uh, um, combined uh, final sample rate is. Um, again, I'm not going into this in detail because there really is quite quite extensive documentation online. Um, but one thing I want to point out, which is quite unusual and that is quite nice, is that this notion of not paying for stuff you don't use um, extends to a nice feature, uh, which is this. If we are creating, uh, I'll go back to this again, um, an event, we can use this let binding over here, which again uh, is documented in some detail in the uh, doc strings, but basically we can set up bindings over here. Let's do example, my y. These could be expensive, for example. 
Um, and these bindings are accessible uh, both to the data that you're uh, attaching to your uh, signal call. Why? why um, or let's do let's do something more interesting. Let's say x is five and two x y. Let's say z is plus x and y, and um, our message as well. Right. So my calculation, and uh, that calculation is. Uh, ba -ba -ba -bum. Let's, I don't know, let's multiply x and y over there, something like this. And when this uh, comes out over here, you'll see it's including the calculation and the data which we put in, and all of this is being uh, paid for conditionally, uh, which means we're not paying for this let if the particular signal is filtered because the ID is filtered or the namespace is filtered or we don't exceed the minimum level or because it's sampled or because the rate temperature is kicked in, uh, which means we can have relatively expensive stuff in here if we're, uh, let's say, I don't know, we need to fetch something from the database in order to uh, uh, properly, you know, populate this with the information that we need. Um, likewise, you will see in uh, uh, options over here, um, there is also a do, so we can, I don't know, put some side effect in there if we want. Um, there's quite a lot of flexibility. Uh, the main point is you're not paying for any of this uh, if the signal itself is not being created. All right, so that hopefully gives you a basic idea of approximately what Telomere can do, approximately what the API looks like. Um, I wanna quickly uh, point you in the direction of where you can find more information. Uh, so firstly, on the Telomere GitHub page, there is the wiki, uh, which goes into quite a bit of detail on everything I discussed over here. Um, a quick rundown of how the API works, uh, how the uh, sampling and filtering work, um, gives you a rundown of the various uh, signal creators, uh, where have they gone? Over here, the various signal creators, all of this links to doc strings as well in the documentation, which has uh, usage examples and so on. Um, there is a section on the general architecture of Telomere, so you understand how things flow. There's a bunch of information about in here about, for example, the queuing semantics and the async configuration, which I was talking about earlier. Uh, there is information about how to configure Telomere, uh, signal filtering, uh, how to interop with tools logging, Java logging, including SLIF, uh, 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 SLIF4j, I actually don't know how to pronounce that. Um, how to uh, interrupt with open telemetry, how to interrupt with uh, Tufty or Truss. Uh, there is information on handlers, including what handlers are included out the box and how to manage handlers, how to write handlers, um, example outputs. There is um, substantial info on migrating from uh, Timber and so on. And uh, there is an FAQ, there are tips. Um, I've just started writing this, but uh, general guidance on building observable systems with closure and uh, usage tips for Telomere. So this gives you an idea. There's a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, please take a look at it. Most of Telomere is actually very simple and the API surface area is very small. Uh, most people aren't gonna be using a lot of it, but the stuff that is there is useful when you need it. Uh, so the idea is it's quick to get started, but when you need some particular capability, it will be available and it will be documented and uh, you will be able to find it, hopefully. Uh, the last thing I can remind is to take a look at these help bars. They're going to, again, a lot of internal information. Uh, so if you don't want to browse on the wiki, a lot of the same uh, content is available locally in your IDE. Um, and uh, yes, that's it. That's telling me I hope that was helpful. Uh, let me know if any of this was unclear. I am very interested in improving the documentation. In particular, I'm really interested in making the documentation as friendly as possible to beginners. Uh, my hope is that the API is, uh, is quite pleasant and intuitive. Uh, but if anything is not intuitive or is unpleasant, uh, please also let me know. Um, there is on the GitHub page over here a link to the Slack channel. Um, and also you can reach me on GitHub as usual by creating an issue. Um, and that's it. I hope that was useful. Cheers.